Today I'm going to show you how to make some contour or topographic type effects in Lightwave 3D. Then we're going to marry them up in After Effects and throw a little Element 3D and trap code form confetti on top. Scene setup first, there is a null right at the center of our scene at 000. That's got rotation on it along the heading. Along for the ride is our mountain, as I'm calling it. That's got a displacement on and sub patch. The displacement is a simple turbulence texture with the position animated on the Y. The camera doesn't move here, but it is set back quite a long way in the scene and we're zoomed in quite close, just to sort of flatten out the perspective. We'll start off with the most basic way of creating lines across this mountain and that's just with simple old texturing. So let's jump to VPR and get up our surface editor. First method is to dig out the marble texture. So we'll go to marble, color into the color. We'll put it into the luminosity color as well, just to get a clearer idea. Let's make the foreground color white. So we're just dealing with black and white values and the axis Y. Because it's a deformed shape, world coordinates. Let's fiddle with some settings. Distortion, we don't want any distortion. Noise scale. Well, it has to be a value because if I put in zero, it just whites out. So let's put in something really small. Contrast, let's have 100% contrast. I don't think the frequency has much effect at this point. Obviously the vein spacing is pretty self-explanatory. That's looking good, but rather than using it in the shader, we're gonna use it as a clip map. So out of the color into the clip and let's unplug these two. I might change the background color as well. Good starting point there. We can smooth it. We can double side it as well if we want to render the insides. Looking a bit jaggy. Well, we can change that by adding our sub patch so we get a nice smooth surface. So that's the marble. Now let's try another approach which gives us slightly more control. Clear out this. Let's go for a gradient and a vector scalar. As I mentioned earlier, this is a displaced mesh. If we take object position, it'll just think it's a flat plane. So let's go from world position into the vector scalar. We need the Y position and then the Y into the gradient. So open the gradient. Let's start with the white key here. Second key, let's make it black. Let's make that black key stepped. So you can see the way this is going. Let's create another key in there. And quite simply for the post behavior, repeat. So now we've got control over the spacing, whether they be thick or thin. So again, fiddle around with the settings until you're happy. We're gonna close that down, take that out of our color and use it in our clip. So that's our first pass. Now I've chosen white as my main color here because I'm gonna use the tint effect in After Effects to do our colorizing later. Render it out as a PNG 32-bit with alpha channel embedded. And let's move on to the next pass, which will be the intersecting edges. A fresh duplicated scene with exactly the same moves in camera positions and everything else as the previous scene. Over to model, let's create our intersection plane. Ground plane will do for this. It doesn't need any segments, call it intersect. We're going to use instances here and this will be our source. So we'll start by hiding it and turning it off to the render. Over to items, clone. You'll see this down here just off screen, clone instance. That will automatically create a null with our instancer conveniently bolted to it. We want a radial array, one on the X. Let's go for 10 on the Y, one on the Z. I could leave this in world space, I guess, and just scale it up, but because there's rotation on it, I'm gonna take parent in place off and parent it to our moving rotation. Let's just take down our height ever so slightly. Doesn't need to be right at the bottom of the stack. In fact, it's probably better that it isn't. With our source instance object selected, we will go to the primitives tab and under edges, we will tick on intersection edges. I'm gonna set this to zero so our mountain is our main controller. We'll now pop over to our mountain object and do the same thing. So intersection edges 
uh, it will say one pixel. Now these are the ones we do want to see. Uh, one pixel would be uh, a 2D thing. So if we were close or far away, it will always display at one pixel width. But we want it in 3D space. So we put a minus and we'll put it, let's try 0.1 to begin with. Jump over to VPR to see this take effect. We can see our intersecting edges, but we can also see the plane. So let's turn those off. We'll again, jump back to our base instance object over to the render tab and we'll go unseen by camera. So that will hide those, but it's all looking a bit dark. And the reason is that is because it's still casting shadows. Turn those off as well. While we're thinking about it, let's isolate our lines back again to the mountain. Let's turn that on unseen by camera and turn off the casting of shadows. Nearly there for this bit. How do we colorize our lines so they reflect what's going on with the mountain? There's a couple of ways we could go back to our edges. We can change the color. It's one flat color, so there's no shading in there whatsoever. That is why a shaded surface exists. So if we click on that, you can see it taking on the colors of the mountain. As we change our mountain base color, you can see our lines change with it, which includes a little bit of specularity, roughness, all of that lovely stuff. To show this color transfer, I'm going to start a fresh scene. So I have a box with an animation over 120 frames and an intersection plane. All the intersection stuff is set up exactly as I've just shown. I'm just going to colorize uh, each side of the cube first. Six sides of the cube with the index beginning at zero, five in here. Let's put a keyframe at the end. Let's colorize that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Distribute keys. That'll do. Let's just hit distribute keys again, just in case I knock something. And the great news is that the intersections are picking up the colors of our base model. You can see there's a point where we get a little jump. That's just because if we turn our cube back on, that's the point at which our face crosses that intersection. We're happy with that. I've made them slightly thinner there and I've turned it white so we can again tint it in After Effects. So render that out as a PNG 32 bit with alpha and we'll get on with exporting the OBJ sequence. Another duplicated scene with the exact same settings. Now our problem is that After Effects only transfers the pivot point data and will not understand what's going on with geometry, let alone displacements. So the only way around that is to export our model as an OBJ sequence. And to do that, we're going to use an excellent free plugin by Ernest P. Chan called Save Transform Sequence Plus. We're going to be using element and trap code form on this. So before we run this plugin, we are going to go and open our preferences over on the keyboard and jump to the OBJ tab. Now, if you've seen my Lightwave to Element tutorial, you'll know that the secret setting for export scale is 4,000%. So make sure you're set there. Now also for this, I will not be needing subdivisions. There's plenty of geometry already there. We're ready to go with the OBJ export. Save Transform Sequence Plus is open. We need to save as OBJ. Save it to your folder of choice. Now I found I don't need the folder because this seems to take care of all those settings. Let's just call it mountain, file name, hit OK, and it will run through the timeline, zero to 150 frames, exporting one OBJ per frame. See you in After Effects. I'm all rendered and ready for compositing. I've started up After Effects and bought in our image sequences. Let's uh, quickly run through those. So the first uh, first pass was our contours. Let's just create a background. Our stripy white lines. And for reference, I also rendered out, well, I was trying out the cell shading on the mountain. Uh, I'm not sure it uh, works for this, <laughs> but it's quick to render and worth trying but we'll use that for reference. Finally, the OBJ sequence that was exported from Lightwave. The folder just looks like this, with each frame being a separate 
OBJ and you just bring that into After Effects exactly as you would an image sequence. We won't be seeing this directly so we'll just turn it off and tuck it under our background layer. So let's add some colors to this. Rather than a grayscale UI we're going to chuck in a few colors I think. Our white lines. As I mentioned earlier we're going to use the tint effect on this so tint. The whites will be the white, the black will be the black. This basically means I can change the shading to whatever color I like. So I can also do the same with the whites. I could invert the colors for instance. But I think I'll just take the background color and a lighter version of the background color without actually being full on white. Let's do the same for our contours. In fact, let's just copy and paste our tint. Perhaps our shading, perhaps we could have that slightly whiter. Or perhaps we could go for an entirely different color. Again, it's totally, totally up to you. This is just to get the ball rolling. Let's see if there's anything in this cell shading past that's worth using. Doesn't appear to be here on first glance, but with a finger on the shift and plus key, we can cycle through the layer modes. And actually, there is something quite useful there. Lower the opacity. Yeah, we'll keep that there for now. Perhaps higher in the stack. I'll leave it where it was, but uh, no, that's quite nice. I'm going to leave that for now. I think it's that stage where I feel it needs uh, some sort of graph or grid underneath it. This is where we pop back to Lightwave and get some 3D data. Okay, so here's our scene. Let's start with the camera. In, out, tab, send to AE. There you go, it's straight away updated. Uh, now I also want uh, the, the mountain detail. I don't need to recreate the hierarchy here like you'd need to if you were going from After Effects back to Lightwave. Here it's just sent through in world coordinates. So just selecting the mountain, send to AE. There you go, you see it updated in the background. So I know there's rotation on the parent object in Lightwave, but if I look here in the graph editor, I will see it's gone through here. So that keeps everything nice and tidy. Now we have that, the grid is simple to create. Let's create a new solid, Command Y, call it grid. Let's make it square. Put it in 3D space. With our finger on the Shift key, we'll pick quick this to our mountain cell. So that will now jump to the coordinates. Obviously it's at the wrong angle, so we'll rotate that accordingly and we'll move it to the bottom of the stack. Knock the opacity back a little bit. So we have a solid that now tracks nicely with our mountains. And to add that grid, we will add a grid. Okay, that's good. Might invert that. Make the borders slightly thicker. We also have control of where we can place that because as you see, we're now in a 3D world. Element 3D, I did a whole tutorial on this, so let's rifle through this now. Let's create a new solid, call it E3D. Make sure it's comp size. Add element. We're dealing with OBJ sequences. The only difference to this route is you ha we have to go into File, Import, 3D Sequence. We only need to select the first frame of the sequence, Import 3D Object. Uh, again, Force Alignment, we want that from the model. Okay, that. So here is our mountain. And the only other thing to check is that normalized size is off. So it's taking that 4000% export from Lightwave. I'm going to use wireframe here. We could texture that directly within the surface here. But I'm going to use a buffer, which I'll show you to do in a sec. It's all a little bit out of phase here. Group. Now the position. X, Y, Z needs to equal the position of our mountain. We could just copy it, but I'm going to write an expression because it's just easier in many ways. Option, click on the stopwatch, and then option, click on the stopwatch for the Z position. Select the layer, double E. So that'll just give us what we need. Pick wick to the position, and then pick wick the Z position to the Z position there. 
So all our figures now marry up and we have a perfectly aligned Element 3D object. Let's move it to the bottom. All very lovely, but I don't really want a full render for this. Under the output tab, show composite is okay. Polygon mode is wireframe. So we've got a nice OBJ sequence following our contours. If you decided you wanted a slightly less dense model, you'd have to go back to the source, either recreate a low res version or run a bit of bang glue over it, then re-export it as an OBJ sequence. This is all very nice you say, but I don't have element, but I do have the trap code suite. How do I do that in form? I will show you. Let's create a new solid, let's call it form and apply form. This is where we need our OBJ sequence in our timeline. So selecting form, we go to our base model. Base form, we will select OBJ model. That will open up these settings here, the OBJ settings. So we need to point that to our mountain sequence, OBJ sequence. Let's solo that. As you can see, not a great deal has happened. There's a couple of, couple of reasons for this. Firstly, normalize size is ticked. So we'll untick that. And there we have our model, but you'll notice slightly wonky. And the reason for that is we have an invert Z button that needs to be ticked. So we haven't had to do anything there. We keep the size at the default 500 and the position, it seems quite happy at the center of the screen. We've got a nice wireframe. We haven't had to wire up any rotations. If you know how to use form, there's a whole wealth of stuff you could add to this which is great for UI stuff, or it's basically a particle generator. So terrain elements, go to town. <laughs> Play around with colors, fiddle around with settings. I've played around with some typography stuff using the edge intersection stuff with some nice results. Some things, <laughs> some things turned out better than others, but uh, you, get the, you get the idea. I hope uh, it's been of use.